Look at how Iraq went. There, video done. You know, I'm just a guy with a channel, but that channel is about theorizing. Usually that's about past events, but this time, I'm going to theorize about how a possible future event might go. An invasion of Iran. Can you put that in the form of a question? Uh, what if that thing I said? Now, it's not likely it will happen, ever, I hope. Please don't jinx it. But if it does, or seems really likely because of America's current alliances with certain nations, this video is a handy last second guide for, uh, anyone in charge. Why invading Iran is a really, really bad idea. Originally, I was going to say that justification of war with Iran would need to be extremely credible, or at least, kinda credible. But after furiously fixing this video due to recent events, I feel like, nah, any justification for war would not have to be that credible. Or at least the response would be tenfold compared to whatever action Iran may or may not have taken to justify said response. A good analogy is if a child gives you an angry slap, and in response you toss him off a skyscraper. Yes, the child probably learned his lesson falling to the pavement, but now you're in prison with your own problems. And I ain't lying. <laughs> so, small threat, massive response. This isn't like the post 9-11 world where anything could be slapped on a label as tied to terrorism and that'd be a legitimate cause. Bush's faulty evidence on Iraq's WMDs never would have gained traction without the broader context of the war on terror. Even then, it was still protested around the globe and not supported by nations who were in Afghanistan. After almost, god, two decades of this, the public is now more cynical and jaded from the idea of another Middle Eastern conflict. According to Gallup polls, don't take these as gospel but they help prove a point, an invasion of Iran is overwhelmingly disapproved by the public, 82% as of 2019. So the backlash to any involvement in Iran would be larger than any protest of Iraq, or even the ones of the last few years, it'd be an overwhelming, resounding... Yes? <laughs> no. But you know, protests didn't work in Iraq, I doubt protests work for Iran, so off to war we go. Yippee, what now? The United States is uncontested on the seas. Many assume that this part of the invasion, just entering the strait and blocking in the Iranians, would be simple. What could Iran do? This is where I want to introduce you to Millennium Challenge 2002. In 2002, the US military conducted a military exercise, the most expensive of its kind. It was to see how the US could successfully conduct a war against an unrelated Middle Eastern nation to see how well it would perform. It was Iran. It was a test for a war against Iran. There was the blue team, America, and the red team, Iran. For the red team, the chosen commander was retired Lieutenant General Paul Van Riper. At his disposal was only equipment that Iran would have. Small speedboats, low-flying planes, short-range missiles, the whole shebang. So the exercise began. Van Riper, knowing that the US Navy would immediately sail too close, began to attack first. He sent off his suicide bombing boats. They'd give coordinates to where the US ships were and relay it back to the missiles. Then the ships would run straight into the US cruisers, detonating. In the first phase of the exercise, 19 ships, including three aircraft carriers, were sunk. Estimates for the total US casualties this would have brought was 20,000. The largest navy in the world was decimated in combat by a technologically inferior enemy. Granted, all of this was because of a 40-year career veteran of the Marines. He said that he knew the US would be too reliant on their own technology and ideal of power that they'd underestimate his forces. The US hoped the Red Team would have used satellite or radio to relay orders, yet instead he used motorcycle carriers. So what did the US do in response to this news? Simple. They just rigged it. The Red Team was not allowed to use suicide boats, nor would they be allowed to shoot down planes using radar. The exercise was meant to show the Blue Forces winning overwhelmingly. 
The US learned nothing, is what I'm saying. So would a war with Iran lead to an immediate 20,000 dead? No. I doubt Iran's generals would be as efficient as he was, however, they don't have to be as efficient. They just have to follow the same strategy, and it could produce similar results. Imagine the backlash and blow to morale if just one aircraft carrier is sunk, or a thousand Navy personnel die. Long story short, it isn't that easy of a fight, and we haven't even landed in Iran yet. So let's talk about the initial invasion. Iran is not Afghanistan or Iraq. Afghanistan has a mountainous terrain, but its central government at the time, the Taliban, was nothing more than just a militia force. Iraq, while it did have a sizable military, had only 40% of the million troops they once had a decade earlier. Most of them were poorly trained. Not to mention the nation itself is flat desert connected by highways, allowing coalition troops to easily invade from north and south right into Baghdad. Both operations took around a month, resulted in minimum American casualties, and took down the governments with ease. Iran would not be this. Iran has double the military Iraq did in 2003. And they were better trained, equipped, and commanded. The entire nation is a geographic fortress, a plateau. Any relatively flat area is either uninhabited or on the coast. So actually invading the nation will require going through natural choke points. Highways would be the best options for troops landing in the Persian Gulf, going north into Iran. Even then, it isn't as simple as the last two wars in the initial stage. It's not like Iran would win this fight. However, the opening invasion certainly would have higher casualties than the public expected from two decades ago. And that right there is also a blow to morale. But Tehran is after a month or two or three, taken, and now the Americans are left in charge of a people who didn't wish they were there due to a war with an iffy cause. Iran has major issues. It's a theocracy. It forces women to wear head veils, promotes radical extremism. Yeah, its government is horrible. But no matter how a people feel about a government, there is nothing more uniting to them than a foreign power invading their land. Which is why I find the idea that any real human could think doing the same invasion slash nation building tactic would work the third time, but maybe it isn't supposed to work. Maybe it's just supposed to depose a rival for others who can't directly do it themselves no matter the outcome, but that's just my guess. Iran right off the bat has a population larger than Afghanistan and Iraq combined. An insurgency in Iran would be worse than any we faced before in the war on terror. It's less Iraq and more Vietnam. Now it could be easily made worse if the US decided to disband the military like they did last time, leading to an influx of military-grade equipment going into the hands of now unpaid men trained for combat. Not to mention the demographic problem, 40% of Iran's population are not Persian, so various people like Kurds, Azeris, Lurds, Arabs, or Baloks may or may not get along once that central government breaks down. Oh, and the 8% who are Sunni, who certainly in no way would be influenced to break away from the Shia Iranian state by any outside influences. Ethnic cohabitation has been a problem that Tehran has needed to deal with, well, since the idea of an Iranian nation state has existed. And while I don't know if these ethnic groups will break off or fight amongst each other, I do know that this is not a situation you want a foreign western power to deal with. Now getting past the rough invasion, the difficult terrain, the angered, fractured, large population, and an insurgency, the politics come in. If we went into Iran, this would be a conflict slash situation that we'd see for the next 20 to 30 years. It would break the Iranian state and be tore up from the outside by neighboring powers who each want a chunk. The Sauds would now have an opportunity to export their own brand of Islam against the Shias, spreading Wahhabism by money or by blood into the nation. Russia could export arms to keep the Americans busy against insurgents. Any Islamic extremist group is going to have a field day carving up territory, and America is going to have to save face and spend trillions of dollars 
on another endless war. All while the Iranian people are caught in the middle and the state is reduced from a pretty iffy theocracy into a war zone. Creating an issue we'll see even after those who started this war are already in their grave. I don't think there will be a war. At least even with my cynical lens, I can't imagine we'd see an Iran invasion just like in Iraq or Afghanistan. Realistically, I could see more sanctions being done on Iran, their air and naval space restricted, their economy sinking even further. I wouldn't be surprised if already there isn't plans to spark some form of rebellion within Iran itself. Maybe even cyber war. Who knows? The thing about interesting times is that they could always be more interesting. How many times it would take for governments to realize this type of strategy doesn't work is for our descendants to find out. This is Cody of Alternate History Hub.